debris scattered everywhere. We have major, major damage at grain bins, the middle of the road, tractors. It's absolutely intense. It's Clarence again. I'm out here at the Dale Moffat Reservoir, just to the southwest of Des Moines. Nice public area. I don't think a lot of people know about. Has a huge lake. Um, good area for hiking, fishing, kayaking, having a picnic. Kind of somewhat secluded area. It's a beautiful if not a little chilly spring day. Yesterday it was 30 degrees, today it's 50, and three days from now it's supposed to be 80. Welcome to Iowa's weather. What I want to talk about today a little bit, have some time, is my chase vehicle. So you can kind of see behind me. I drive a 2013 Toyota Camry in Barcelona red metallic. It has four cylinder, 2.5 liter dual overhead cam engine with 178 horsepower. And let me tell you, this baby really purrs. That's all it does is purr, it doesn't roar. I'll be completely honest, it's very uninspiring. But it's a very reliable, safe vehicle. I've always chased in a sedan. I've had a Focus, Corolla, Pontiac, Taurus, and my very first chases uh, with my very good friend, best friend, Corey Allen, was in his Chevy Cavalier. And you'll see people with some crazy vehicles out storm chasing. Yes, I'd love a pickup truck. Someday I'll have one. I'd love to take the Cybertruck out, knowing it's capabilities in terms of what it could do in hail, just the performance. They just have to get over the range anxiety, to be honest. Uh, but I think even that would be uh, something that could be overcome. But the point is, you don't need a lot to go storm chasing. And I'm not saying to go out and just do it without any experience. Always, if you're new to it, go with someone who's experienced. But you don't need the studded tires, the hail cage, extra lights, a roll bar, all this crazy stuff. You just have to be smart on where you're going. Uh, you know, I don't go down dirt roads, uh, class B roads out of the question. Even some gravel roads after a heavy rain just are not a smart idea. You know, I've seen a fair number of sedans and SUVs, trucks get stuck while out chasing. Just have to be smart about it and not take risks. Uh, it's better to have a reliable vehicle as opposed to something that's going to break down. The Camrys are notorious for their reliability. They're safe as I said before uh, and honestly they can get up and go when you really have to. Uh, it's never been an issue. You know this guy has a 36 and a half foot turning radius uh, that's also very important, you know, when you're on a narrow road out in the country and you have to do a quick turnaround. That's something that's important to me. You know, I, I can't imagine being as nimble in a Ford Expedition or some other large vehicle. But the point is, the most important vehicle is one that gets you where you're going. Whether it's storm chasing, your everyday commute. That's what we're really talking about here. Are you ready? Oh yeah. Always wear your seatbelt, especially when storm chasing. I hear this purr I was talking about.
All right, let's go home. appreciation for police officers and first responders. Um, I've never had a bad interaction or anything, you know, that gave me a bad taste after interacting with a police officer. So I know there are many instances out there where that's not the case. And, you know, some people have not such nice things to say about police officers, but they do far outweighs uh, a few bad actors that are out there in my opinion. But anyway, 
safety is the utmost important thing on your mind. You have to be aware of other drivers, other storm chasers, obeying traffic laws. The severe weather that you encounter, the hail, the lightning, the flooding, the tornadoes, that to me is secondary to the concern of other drivers, especially when I'm pulled over on the side of the road and people aren't paying attention. I can see it being a very easy thing where another storm chaser or just general public thinks their storm chasers aren't paying attention and they broadside your vehicle or you. Um, that quite honestly is the scariest thing about storm chasing in my opinion. Uh, when I was in Oklahoma last year, there was a lot of convergence on one cell and there was literally hundreds of storm chasers on these old two-lane county roads and I witnessed not them actually happening but I saw that there had been several accidents of storm chasers running into each other. And granted, that was an extreme situation. It's usually not that packed, at least up here in, in Iowa and the upper Midwest and Great Plains. But uh, if you have an instance where a lot of chasers are out and there's one good cell, that very easily can happen again. And it could put you in a dangerous situation that if you're in that accident, you're stuck and that storm you're chasing or maybe another one that built behind it uh, comes through you know you're talking depending on where you're at that risk of flooding hail lightning uh, and tornado so it is a concern um, as I mentioned you should not be chasing by yourself uh, especially inexperienced you know I've been doing this for over 20 years in some form or another and only in the last probably five years have I felt comfortable enough with myself to be by myself you know I always wanted to go with someone uh, whether it be my wife or a close friend uh, even just someone that's less experienced just to be there just in case uh, it's a lot of work a lot of stuff's going through your head when you're driving looking at radar looking at the sky anticipating calculating uh, it's always great to have someone to go with you uh, but I understand that there are those who obviously go by themselves either by choice or they just don't have anyone else to chase with. The name of the game, and the end of everything, is just to maintain that safety. Um, keep your eyes on the road. Follow traffic laws. Be aware of the situation in terms of weather. You know where your escape path is. Uh, there's just so much that goes into it that if you do something wrong. It could cost you damage to your vehicle, to others' vehicles, their lives, and your life. So, I don't mean to make too much light of storm chasing in these videos. Especially when severe weather, whether it's flooding, tornadoes, lightning, kills people. Uh, it's really just having that appreciation it's really just having an appreciation for those things when you have that it's the only way you should be a storm chaser it's not about getting the shot it's not about blowing up on twitter blowing up on your local news first and foremost it's the safety of others and your own safety. Uh, you should
should be a spotter before a chaser. I'd also say Storm chases that don't come out as you expect, the tornadoes that didn't happen, the choices you make on chasing this cell versus that cell is your greatest learning opportunity. And it's awesome if you can learn those mistakes from someone who's chased before. And I don't mean just once or twice they've been out. I mean, they've been on dozen, two dozen chases in their life. Uneventful or eventful, every chase is a learning opportunity. You know, I was very frustrated. I went quite a few years in, in different spurts not seeing a tornado. And Iowa, I'll, I'll venture is a lot harder to chase in just because of the um, weather patterns and kind of the combination of fronts you have to deal with and it's just really hard for the professionals to predict um, you know their outlooks oftentimes don't pan out and I don't fault them you know they're awesome at predicting events in the southeast and uh, south central plains oklahoma and that um, but in iowa the, the weather system is just so complex you have a warm front oftentimes in play in addition to the cold front uh, usually trails behind um, we're right in that convergence zone where you can have enough moisture but not enough not enough uh, daytime heating. There's just so many variables that makes it really hard to predict and have a good outcome in Iowa. Uh, if you follow any storm chasers on Twitter, you'll see that Iowa's a lot of times the butt of a lot of jokes. Uh, so it's going to take time uh, if you're in Iowa and the upper Midwest to really gain some good experience storm chasing um, where you actually see a tornado. But don't become distraught by the failures, perceived failures of not seeing a tornado. Uh, and there's a lot of other cool stuff to see and photograph if that's what you're into. Um, a lot of my favorite shots were not anything to do with a tornado. A lot of great sunset uh, storm photos. Um, just being outside out of the city especially if you live in one of our, our metro areas and if you're on the coast don't laugh Iowa has metro areas but it's just nice to get out and see nature and cornfields might be boring to some but for me I really enjoy it say that when they go on long road trips they enjoy Iowa because it is pretty picturesque the rolling hills um, very lush and vibrant open sky um, I personally love it well the sun is setting just about back home. I hope uh, you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little discussion. Uh, we'll talk more about gear and equipment and how I prepare uh, to go storm chasing. Uh, you know, there's a fair amount there. We'll probably split it up over a few different videos. As always, I appreciate you all tuning in here. I encourage
encourage you to hit that subscribe button. Again, the whole goal of this video is to share my passion and hopefully eventually start earning some money where this is my job, this is what I do. Um, and hope above all that you learn something, you stay safe, and uh, have a greater appreciation for storms and storm chasers. So, have a good night.